You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. And welcome down to Socks in the Basement. My name is Chris Lanuti, belling up to my nine-foot homemade oak bar and pour yourself a cold one. Folks, we are in the middle of a fantastic season by the Chicago White Sox during this 2020 simulated season from Socks in the Basement that has been going on every day since opening day and then backed up with post-game analysis from SocksOn35th.com. The White Sox are 11 games over 500 as of today, 29 and 18. And about to begin a very long stretch of games that will see them without rest for two weeks. It's the Rockies at home for two, four on the road in Minnesota, four on the road in Baltimore before they come home and host the Minnesota Twins for three. A big stretch for this team that is hot on the heels of the Twins in the AL Central race. A game and a half back after we had a day off yesterday and they won. And the White Sox offense has been a big reason for their breakout this year. Yasmani Grandal and Edwin Encarnacion lead the team in home runs with 13. Abreu and Jimenez with 11 behind them. Yoan Mancata has 9. Those are your top 5 home run hitters so far. Meanwhile, the league leader in stolen bases is Luis Robert with 18, with Tim Anderson right behind him with 15 swiped bags. TA is still leading the team in batting average at 335, with Mancata hot in his heels hitting 331, and Yasmani Grandal has had a spectacular month and is up to 310. Grandal is also your leader in OPS with a 1.037 OPS. Without further ado, we head out to Guaranteed Rate Field for our first of two against the Colorado Rockies. It's White Sox Simulated Baseball on Socks in the Basement, brought to you by Cork and Carry at the Park, and found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SocksInTheBasement.com. Let's go! And welcome to Guaranteed Rate Field on an overcast day. The White Sox at 29-18 taking on the Colorado Rockies at 20-26. The White Sox lost both games in Colorado earlier this month. Dylan Cease will take the mound for the Sox today as they try to exact revenge in this shortened series. Dylan Cease, nine starts so far, 4-2, 4.01 ERA over 51 and two-thirds innings. He's got a 1.37 whip. 48 strikeouts. He gave up 52 hits and 17 walks over that time. And he'll get us kicked off against Ramil Tapia, who's hitting 257 and hits at the left side of the plate. Rondal behind the plate calls for the first pitch of the game, and here it is a four seamer that misses on the outside corner. White Sox currently in second place in the AL Central at 29 and 18. A game and a half back entering today. First pitch at 7 10 tonight as Cease delivers. His second offering swung on and missed a four-seamer. Low at the knees, one and one the count. Curveball swung on and missed now. One and two as Tapia stands in. Already I can tell you the team chasing the White Sox, the Cleveland Indians, getting beat up in their cross-Ohio meeting with the Cincinnati Reds, 15-2 in Cleveland in the fifth inning of their game. 54 degrees, 10 mile an hour winds blowing in from left field and overcast skies. A lot of rain in the area over this past weekend. A lot of folks on the south side experiencing some flooding as this one swung on and missed a slider away. And that's the first out on a strikeout from Dylan Cease. Happy will have to go back and figure things out for his next at bat. Brondau sends it around the horn. At first, we have Abreu, second base, Madrigal. Third base, Larry Garcia filling in for Yoan Mancata today. He needed an extra day off after yesterday off as well. Tim Anderson gets the start at short. It's the first pitch to Daniel Murphy. The lefty is a ball away. Next one fouled off down the third base line, one and one. Jimenez in left, Robert in center, Mazzara in right. Rondal, of course, behind the plate. Dylan Cease. With a 1-1 pitch on the way from the mound. Checks it up on a changeup low and inside. Joe McDonald, the home plate umpire, says it was not close enough. Borderline call. He'll be making the calls today. The count is 2-1. We've already seen in the first 
few pitches of this game. He has a very tight strike zone, at least early on. Swung on and missed on a four-seamer inside. Two and two, the count. Murphy's hitting 270. As Cease gets him the ground one down the first base line that goes off his first base coach's leg. And goes back into fair territory. Now Cease working quickly. Throws a low inside curveball that misses three and two. Nolan Arenado hitting 322 with 10 home runs and 25 RBI so far in this season. Stands on deck. He may be the hottest hitter for the Rockies so far this season. The 3-2 pitch swung on and lifted down the first base line going foul into the stands. Will reset with a full count. Another payoff pitch on the way. Swung on and chopped over to short. Garcia was on the shift, so he's going to field it over to first. And that is the second out. Anderson had set up behind second base with a shift on there. Now they're going to reposition for Nolan Arenado. Two outs quickly here in the top of the first. Arenado is the best hitter over the last 10 days for the Colorado Rockies. Hitting 340 during that time. And he has two home runs. The best hitter for the White Sox over that same period of time, the last 10 games, is the guy who just caught that curveball behind the plate at 1-0 and now, Yasmani Grandal, who's hitting 559 over his last 10 games with four home runs and 14 RBI. He's having an insane stretch right now. 2-0 as that pitch misses to Arenado. Cease into the wind. Throws one inside at the hips. 3-0. Charlie Blackman's on deck. So Cease gets two quickies. But now trying to pitch around Arenado. Swung on a fastball down the middle. He was way out in front and sends it foul down the third base line deep. So he had the green light, 3-0. and Let's see what happens here. Now he's going to rip another one deep down the third baseline. He went down to a knee, but the count is full. He's way out in front of Cease. Let's see what he throws. Oh, he gets him diving away at a curveball outside the zone. Arnado looked hitterish, and Grandal and Cease took advantage of his anxiousness. One, two, three in the first. We go to the bottom of the first with the White Sox coming up for the first time. John Gray gets the start. Nine so far this season. Four and three record. 2.76 earned run average over 58 and two-thirds innings. 40 hits and 20 walks. It's a 1.02 whip. That's incredible for a starter. He also has 50 strikeouts in those 58 and two-thirds innings. He has good numbers. And he was tough on the White Sox when we faced him earlier this month. Tim Anderson's hitting 335 with four dingers on the season. He'll stand in and lead it off. The White Sox have basically their standard lineup, but Grandal fills in in the four spot today as Moncada's not playing and Larry Garcia's in the two spot. The Rockies are 20 and 26. That's fourth in the NL West. First pitch to Anderson, a strike. Now Gray throws a curveball low and inside, 0 and 2 as it's taken on a check swing by T.A. So quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. Now he sends one out into the left center field gap, tailing back underneath it. A nice play made near the track by the left fielder out there. A fly out for T.A. that had a little bit of distance. Like we said, the wind is blowing in at 10 miles per hour. That may have had a chance if not for the gusting winds coming straight in from left field. As Larry Garcia stands in, hitting 274. And a low inside fastball goes for a ball 1-0 the count he's touched home plate seven times in his last 10 games his average though has dipped a little bit as of late swung on and sent out into center field on the right side underneath it the catch will be made by I believe we have Dow in center no that's Tapia's in center Blackman's in right I believe and in left field we have Dow Jose Abreu up to the plate now with two outs in the bottom of the first. He has 33 RBIs and 11 home runs and a 275 batting average. Swings at a curveball inside and fouls it back into the catcher. 0-1 the count. Gray the righty working quickly. Throws an outside slider that misses 1-1. One one. It has been rainy. The weather has not been good for the last few days. Not a very full ballpark. There was a threat of rain, no walk-up. 
I believe, coming to the gate today. It has been dreary in Chicago, but you can see the temperatures coming soon. It's going to get warm here very quick. Abreu sends this one out in the right center field. It might get down. It will not. Hung up there just long enough for Tapia. The Sacks go 1-2-3, just like the Rockies did in the first inning. We go to the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors for anybody here on the south side. You are listening to a White Sox simulated game as part of a full simulated season. Brought to you by Cork and Carey at the park as Charlie Blackman steps up hitting 310. Cork and Carey has award-winning burgers, incredible appetizers, hot wings, wraps, ballpark-type food, pulled pork nachos, you name it. Get the full menu and order through Grubhub or direct at CorkandCarryAtThePark.com and support a south side tradition. Nine home runs on the season so far for Blackman, who stands in 0-1 after fouling off the first pitch. And the next one, a low inside fastball from Cease, misses 1-1 one one the count. Next offering, swung on and missed. He went over the top of a changeup at the knees. And he was way out in front. Cease had him fooled, 1-2. and two. Rondell sets up inside, low and inside. The strike is called. It's dropped. Rondell down the first, and the drop third strike will get him. Third strikeout of the game for Dylan Cease through his first four batters. And David Dahl hitting 240 from the left side of the plate stands in with one out here in the top of the second. And outside four seamer catches the plate. Owen won the count. Cease takes off his hat, wipes his brow, gets back on the mound. 24 pitches for him so far with one out here in the top of the second inning. The next offering. Swung on and missed a four-seamer straight down the middle. He just challenged Dow on that one. Dead red, and he could not keep up with it. 0-2 count. Cease in the driver's seat, throws a curveball that drops out below the zone for a ball. Dow did not chase it. 1-2 and two the count. Rondal sets up on the outside portion of the plate. The pitch high and away, swung on and missed. Five strikeouts for Cease. I'm sorry, check that. Four strikeouts for Cease, five batters. Filthy early on, Dylan Cease. And as we've mentioned before, Yasmani Grandal has really had an impact as Trevor Story steps in, hitting 340 with six home runs and 24 RBIs. He's got an OPS of 1,003. His average is third in the National League right now, and he takes an outside pitch for a ball, 1-0. and And he was the toughest guy we had to deal with. In the two games in Colorado, they have him in the sixth spot, and I feel like that's at the service to him. As he takes this one now up the middle for a base hit that lands right in front of Robert. He bobbles it on the one hop, but keeps it in front of him. Story has a single, cancel the postgame show. First hit of the game for either team, with two outs here on the top of the second. He's a good hitter. That's why he's on my fantasy team. I traded for him midway through the season last year. And I gave up a lot. Ryan McMahon's hitting 188 with a homer and four RBIs. He did not play the entire season. Came up right before the White Sox. Got to the Rockies earlier on in the month. Curveball away, swung on and missed 0-1. So he has not played as long as everybody else out there in the field. He got started later. Now an inside curveball hits the zone 0-2 as Cease, wasting no time. Getting McMahon down 0-2. Story's on first. He has some speed and is a threat, but I don't think Dylan or Yasmani are worried about him. Inside pitch, a slider brushes back McMahon. 1-2 and two to the lefty. Rondal has had a very good effect on Cease. He works very quickly in counts. From time to time, he'll take a rest like he's doing right there. But then it's just put the sign down and go. And the framing, I believe, of Grandal is making it difference. Runner's going to go. Story's going to get underneath the tag on the throwdown from Grandal. Feet first slide and he steals second. Pitch was an inside ball so the count is even to McMahon with two outs here in the top of the second inning. Cease checks the runner now and delivers. High fastball misses three and two. And now Cease in danger of walking a batter and having first and second here with two outs in the second. Cruising along, but Story gets the hit and puts pressure on. McMahon goes from being 0-2 to 3-2. Rondell with the sign, the pitch. 
in the zone, strikes him out looking on the outside corner. McMahon, frustrated, tosses the bat and goes back to the dugout to get his glove. Midway through to second, no score. Every day since opening day, Sox on 35th has been covering us as we bring you every game since opening day broadcasted here on Sox in the Basement. Go to SoxOn35th.com to get post-game analysis, box scores, and after every series, an update on all the stats for the entire team. And we appreciate that partnership as Yasmani Grandal steps in on the left side, takes a ball outside, 1-0 the count. Grandal, far more dangerous on the left side power-wise than the right side, but he's been doing it from both sides over the last couple of weeks. Grounds this one over to first on the one hop. It'll be fielded. And there's one gone. So two pitches in. There's an out. We we'll go to the uh, second batter of the inning. Aloy Jimenez. Jimenez is on a hit streak. He's got 10 so far, if I'm not mistaken. He also has 11 home runs and 35 RBIs in the season, hitting 275. Gray has only needed 11 pitches to get to this point. By contrast, Cease had just gotten into the 30s at the end of his second inning. So the White Sox need to start making John Gray work a little bit. Seven RBI over the last six games for Jimenez, who takes an inside pitch for a ball, 1-0. Now an outside four-seamer, high, 2-0 the count. That one was at 97 miles an hour. John Gray can bring it. As the sun is already setting early with the overcast skies as they try to fit this game in. Now a high four-seamer misses 3-0. We'll see if Jimenez gets the green light with Encarnacion. On deck, hitting 263. 3-0 count with one out in the bottom of the second. Down the middle, get me over fastball. Jimenez taking all the way, 3-1. The next offering, down low for ball four. Jimenez goes down to first with a walk. First runner of the game for the White Sox. Edwin Encarnacion steps in. He's hitting 263 with 13 homers and 29 RBI on the season. Takes an outside four-seamer, on one the count. Encarnacion tied for seventh in the American League with his teammate Yasmani Grandal with 13 home runs. 0-1 quickly. Grandal has really gotten hot over the last couple of weeks. Encarnacion has been doing this slow and steady throughout the season. 0-2 as that one's fouled off. Now he's going to rip one to second. Double play ball flipped over to short, over to first. Very smooth. Picture perfect. Four to six to three. The inning is over. You go to the top of the third. No score. You're in the family waterproofing solutions third inning. Here on Socks in the basement is Garrett Hampson hitting 224 steps in. And the first offering to him is high and inside on a curveball. 1-0 the count. Family waterproofing solutions. They may be somebody you're thinking about calling right now if you had a lot of water coming in over this past weekend. They take care of everything. Some pumps. Is yours good enough? You have the battery back up. Bunt down the third base line. Garcia unable to get a handle on it. He's on for a base hit. As Leary was not expecting it. So Hampson deadens that ball in the wet infield. It dies. No way to get that perfectly placed. He bunts himself on for an infield hit. So the first man is on here on the top of the third. Based upon the way that Dylan Cease has been pitching, I understand they're trying everything to get on base. He has 37 pitches so far here, though, with no outs here on the top of the third and a runner on. And the slider gets across for a strike, 0 1 the count. You were having problems this weekend. These are the guys to call. If you're concerned, Let's say you're getting some seepage. You saw problems starting to develop. These are the guys you want to call. And they'll do it over video with you as it's 0-2 now on a foul pitch. And now a curveball inside hits the zone. 1-2-3 there as Cease gets his sixth strikeout victim to Dom Nunez. Nunez strikes out looking on the inside corner. There's one gone back to the top of the order with Tapia. who's 0-1 with the strikeout in the first inning. Hitting 255 at this point. An inside curveball misses 1-0. and Get on the video feed. Talk to them over the phone. They don't need to come into the house to give you a free estimate. Veteran-owned, family-owned, female-owned, and special deals for Socks in the Basement listeners. So make sure you mention us. They got a whole list 
This one's popped out into left center field. Coming on quick as Jimenez makes a good play on the run for the second out of the third inning. Runner retreats back to first base, and Daniel Murphy, who's 0 for 1 with the ground on the first inning, steps up. Two outs here in the top of the third with a runner on first. Good speed aboard. Low outside changeup misses 1 0 the count. Remember, they give proceeds, part of them, from every job, including yours, to veterans and first responder organizations. Fastball in the outside corner gets across 1 and 1 the count. We really appreciate Family Waterproofing Solutions teaming up with Sox in the basement not only for this simulated season, but they're still going to be here when games resume in Major League Baseball, which we hope will be soon. That ball's going to get away a little bit, but not far enough. A ball low, 2-1 and one the count. I'm still not convinced like James Fox from Future Sox, who was on here recently. The White Sox beat reporter that always has the scoops as this one is sent out just over the head of Tim Anderson going back for a pop-up. Runners will advance 90 feet. A cheapy little duck snort gives Murphy his 13th hit in 13 games on a hitting streak of his own. As Anderson ran straight back, Jimenez ran straight in, and it dropped right in between the two of them. So with two outs here in the top of the third, there's two on for Nolan Arenado. He struck out in the first inning on a wicked pitch. He was 3-0 in the count. Cease came back and got him. Now 1-0 in the count as a curveball misses low. Next pitch inside, fouled back, 1-1. One one. Cease is struggling with his efficiency. 48 pitches so far here with two outs in the top of the third. This one's sent out in the right field. It will get down for a base hit. Throw's going to come in quickly from Mazzara, cut off by Abreu. Runner's going to score first and third for the Rockies, and they're up 1-0 on a Nolan Arenado flare. Out in the right field. Clean base hit by him. As he goes opposite field, and now the lefty, Charlie Blackman, comes up and Cease is in some trouble. First pitch sent out to center field. Running straight back is Robert. He stops at the track and catches it. This will not clear the wall, and the inning is over, thankfully. But the Rockies put a scare into the White Sox here in the top of the third and get a run. We go to the bottom of the third, trailing by one. Foundation issues not properly handled can be costly. Family Waterproofing Solutions is owned by Ken, a veteran of the United States Marines, and his wife Maria, making them a veteran-owned business and a female-owned business that will diagnose and repair wet or leaky basements. And while they're located on the sock side, Family Waterproofing services the entire Chicagoland area and Northwest Indiana. And now after taking time off to ensure they can do things safely and securely for you, Family Waterproofing is back in business and doing jobs. Plus part of the proceeds for every job that they do are donated to veteran and first responder organizations to support our frontline defenders. And currently, Socks in the Basement listeners have access to special pricing when they contact Family Waterproofing Solutions now, 708-330-4466, or visit them today at FamilyBasementWaterproofing.com. Through the first two innings, John Gray has only allowed a walk. No hits yet for the White Sox, and he has faced the minimum as a double play erased Aloy Jimenez to end the last inning. And Nomar Mazzara now comes to the plate to seven hitter for the first time, hitting 212. And takes the first pitch high in the air in the right field. Can of corn for Blackman underneath it. And one pitch, one out for Mazzara. We've seen that a lot this year from him. When he was starting to hit really well, we weren't seeing that. Now we see him starting to backslide again. Nick Mandrigal's up. He got hot, but he's backsliding a little bit. He's at 246. Takes a low outside changeup for a strike. He's actually hitting 323 over his last 10 games. So when I say backsliding, there was a point where he was hitting 450 over his last 10 games as he has started to heat up. So I shouldn't be so hard on him. Low inside fastball misses one and one the count with one out here in the bottom of the third. Now he swings at a 97 mile an hour pitch up at his chin for strike two, one and two. Gray tries to go back to that. Well, he doesn't swing this time. Two and two. Pound is even. Gray's working quick. 
Only 24 pitches so far for him. This one sent down the first baseline, just foul. Count remains even at two. An inside four seamer misses. The count is full with Robert on deck. Next offering sent down the first baseline. It might drop, but uh, no. Charlie Blackman's just too fast. Coming in all the way to the line, shallow. Makes that play. Luis Robert may be leading the major leagues in stolen bases at 18, but he only has a 189 batting average. It's been speed and defense for him, but the hitting has not come around. He does have three home runs. He does at times get on a little bit of a roll for a couple games, but he has not put it all the way together as that pitch is outside 1-0. Next pitch sent down the right field line hooking foul just before the pole 1-1. Two outs here in the bottom of the third, and John Gray's about to throw only his 30th pitch. It's sent down the third baseline foul, 1-2 and two the count. Robert, the nine hitter, swings and misses at a slider high and outside. Might have been a ball there. Close enough that he went for it. John Gray is rolling right now for the Rockies, much like he did when we saw him in Colorado. After three, the Sox trail one to nothing. Colorado Rockies have had the White Sox number in this season. If you think about who the Sox have played in the National League, taking two out of three from the Padres, taking two out of three from the Giants, that has been a problem. But when they went to Colorado, they lost two on a road trip in which they had played the Angels in a very tough series but had a day off to rest up before they got to Colorado. They lost both of them, including a game the gray here. And they're losing in this game 1-0 and have not collected a hit yet through three. Meanwhile, David Dahl is up. Dylan Cease is sitting on 50 pitches as he starts the fourth inning. And the first offering on the way to the 0-for-1 Dahl is an outside changeup. 1-0 the count. Next pitch hits the outside corner on a fastball, 1-1. One one. Trevor Story stands on deck, and we know what kind of trouble he has given the White Sox this season. Swung on and missed on an inside changeup, 1-2. and two. It's already final out in Cleveland. They moved quick in their game. Cincinnati wins 17-2 over the Indians in their cross-state rivalry. 2-2 two two the count. The pitch on the way. Chopped over to short, fielded by Garcia, thrown over to first. He was on a shift. That is the second time we've seen that shift work out against a Rockies hitter. Trevor Story's one for one with a single in the second inning. Hitting 344 with that OPS over 1,000. There's one out here on the top of the fourth and nobody on. And the righty awaits the pitch from the righty cease. A strike at the knees for Seamer down the middle. He's hitting 417 over his last four games. And he's 0-1 in the count right now. Cease into the line and the pitch on the way. This is away on a changeup, 1-1. One one. Now a low outside fastball, 2-1. Rondell sets up on the outside portion of the plate. He cannot hit the corner. A slider misses, 3-1 the count. They were going for the outside corner there. He was trying to frame it, getting down on one knee. Couldn't get the call. And he can't get the call there on a four-seamer at the knees. Story gets much respect from the umpire and goes down to first base. Cease comes in about halfway to get the ball, which we see pitchers do a lot, and they're not happy with those close walks. So a runner on first. The Sox already down one to nothing. There's one out in the top of the fourth, and Ryan McMahon... The lefty who struck out in the second inning comes up. Not having a very good start to his season. Hopefully Dylan Cease can take advantage. First pitch a strike on a four-seamer. His story stands down at first. Now a throw over to first. Swipe on story was close. But they don't get him. Owen won the count. They're keeping an eye on Trevor. He takes a big leap but doesn't go. Ground ball is short. Anderson's going to get him over at second. Mandrigal with a jump throw over to first, and Abreu digs it out on the one hop. 6-4-3, a pretty thing to see. Midway through to fourth, the White Sox still trying to get their first hit. Tim Anderson's 0 for 1 with a fly out in the first inning. This is his second at bat as John Gray has faced the minimum. Only walking one, that person was erased on a double play. So he's gone through the White Sox lineup now. 
He has the guy who leads this team in hits with 62 in Tim Anderson and also leads him in average who swings at a four-seamer. One and one the count. Great start of the inning with only 31 pitches. Extremely efficient game for a guy who throws up in the high 90s. He sometimes can get to 100. Throws a change up there at 84 miles an hour on the outside corner that misses. Two and one the count. T.A. now sends one out deep into right field. Going to be caught over his shoulder by Charlie Blackman on a nifty play near the Goose Island Bar. So nothing going there as Anderson is given two balls a ride out to the track. But both have been long flyouts. Now Larry Garcia stands in and takes a fastball on the outside corner, 0-1. Garcia batting lefty against the righty gray. Now rips one down the first baseline, a slider way out in front of it, and quickly 0-2. Gray throws one low and away on a changeup, 1-2 the count. White Sox need to get him to throw more pitches. But we're talking about a guy they're going to have to see all game long, and he's red hot out there on the mound today. Next offering hits the inside corner on a curveball. Garcia was frozen. Struck out looking only the second strikeout for Gray. The difference between him and Cease, Gray is letting him put it into play. And his teammates are getting the outs. Cease is getting a lot of strikeouts but using a lot of pitches so far. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth and Abreu comes up with a fly out in the first. And that's pitch number 40 from Gray here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. And it's a strike on the lower outside portion of the plate. 0-1 the count. Next one sent out in the right field. Tailing back towards the track. It'll be caught a couple of feet before the wall. John Gray is pitching masterfully. He's pitching the contact and it's working well for him. After four, the White Sox trail 1-0. The Angels lead in Kansas City right now 6-1. They're in the fifth inning like we are. Top of the fifth, Garrett Hampson comes up. The righty's one for one. He bunted his way on. Takes a strike inside from Dylan Cease. 0-1 the count. Now Cease throws a changeup inside that misses 1-1. One one. Hampson, Dominic Nunez, and then the top of the order with Tapia on deck here for Cease. Who gets a strike across 1-2. and two. Now throws high and away a four-seamer. 2-2 two two the count. Hampson reaches for a slider, tailing way outside the zone, swings and misses. Seventh strikeout for Cease here. And the first out of the top of the fifth. You feel like Dylan Cease is putting in a heck of a game, but since he's not perfect or very close to perfection, like Gray, who has a no-hitter so far through four, it's getting glossed over because his team can't get a hit and get a run for him. Nunez swings and misses at a pitch low and outside. 0-1 the count quickly. Rondal down on one knee, sets up on the outside portion of the plate and kept his glove very low. It is low, the pitch. 1-1 and the count. Now misses the outside corner on a four-seamer, 2-1. and one. Here in the top of the fifth inning, it is the DP3 Tech fifth inning. Find folks over there, as this one swung on and missed two and two. DP3 Tech partnered up with Microsoft, and forget those Zoom calls and the Messenger and the FaceTime, forget all that. Imagine something that links up with your business. Curveball misses outside. Imagine bringing that to the boss, or being the boss, and saying, how can I do this cheaply, effectively? My guys can work better, we get more efficient. Forget temporary, we gotta start talking about what we're gonna do here in the long run. This one is sent out in the center field. Underneath it is Robert. He will make the catch. There's two gone here quickly in the top of the fifth, and Tapia comes up 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout. With one button, get people on. Conference them all in. With one button, show the file or the image or whatever you need to show. And then just holding up a notebook on the screen and hoping people can see it. Forget this talking over people and the lag. Give them a call. Write him an email. Details coming up here midway through this inning. Ground ball over to second base. Mandigo will field it cleanly and over to first. So without further ado, you'll hear all about DP3 Tech. And we'll be back for the bottom of the fifth as the White Sox try to get their first hit of the game still. Midway through five, one to nothing Rockies. New challenges bring new technology. DP3 Tech has partnered with Microsoft to make things easier on you 
and your business. Imagine being able to get everybody together in a nice, easy, user experience friendly meeting room and being able to share whatever you want in the room with just one click. You can migrate from old legacy on-premises equipment right now to flexible, secure, work from home friendly cloud services. Bring your group together faster, better, easier. Find out what DP3 Tech can do for you. Contact their cloud migrations team today, 312-896-2450 or email info at dp3tech.com. Yasmani Grandel will lead off the bottom of the fifth, he's 0 for 1. Grounded out to lead off the second inning as Gray has still faced the minimum. With just one walk in this game, 41 pitches through four innings as he kicks off the bottom of the fifth with a curveball that hits the zone at the knees. 0 and 1 the count. Rondell is only 3 for 19 and 6 strikeouts all time against Gray. Swings and misses at a slider away, 0 and 2. Next pitch swung on and missed. High and inside in the fastball. Three pitches and he sat down. Shakes his head. That's his seventh strikeout of his career. Over 20 at bats against Gray. How do you get a red hot hitter slowed down? I guess he's got to run up against a guy that he has trouble with all the time. Aloy Jimenez is the only guy to reach base for the White Sox. He walked in the second. Takes an inside four seamer, 1 0 the count. So he's seeing the ball very well from Gray. Now we got to turn that into something else. That wind still blowing in from left field is a real trouble for White Sox hitters if they're looking to try to fix everything with one swing. He lifts this one deep out in the center, tailing back towards the wall, but the wind is going to knock this down at the track. We have now seen that happen on four long fly balls to the track for the White Sox tonight. And there's two outs in the bottom of the fifth, and guess what? We saw that happen in Colorado against Gray, too. He's done a very good job playing in Colorado, figuring out how to deaden that ball enough that guys trying to hit one deep off of him are not getting it out. Encarnacion's first pitch has popped up the second. The sacks go down so quickly that Gray only needs to use six pitches. We continue to help this pitcher. 47 pitches through five. We go to the top of the six, trailing one nothing. Dylan Cease enters the top of the six on 75 pitches. Seems to be about the average for White Sox pitchers as they come in. They are not super efficient. A lot of young arms in here, or guys that just like to use a lot of pitches. First pitch is fouled down the first baseline by Daniel Murphy, who's one for two, 0-1 the count. Sees quickly in the wine ground down the outer portion of the plate. The changeup just misses high and away. One and one. Next offering does hit the outside corner for a strike on a four-seam fastball, one and two the count. Murphy, the lefty, stands in and awaits the next pitch. Grounds a curveball over to Madrigal. He fields it back on the grass at second base where he was set up over to first, and that's an out. One gone here in the top of the sixth inning, and Nolan Arenado, who's got the only RBI of the game on a single, and his one for two stands in. He also has a strikeout from Cease. The righty takes an inside four seamer for a strike. Owen won the count. He won the gold glove last year at third base. He'd look good in any uniform, including a White Sox one. He's had some troubles with the Rockies concerning his long-term standing with the team. He expects more to be done after signing his contract to make this team a contender, and he can't be happy that they're under 500 right now. The 2-1 pitch. Swung on and sent out deep in the left field, tailing back to the wall. Jimenez looks up, and that's gone. Arenado now with a solo shot. He's the reason for both the Rockies' runs as he takes this one out 376 feet at 101.9 miles per hour. He'll round the bases, and the superstar of the Rockies is carrying them right now in a game where Dylan Cease has kept everybody else down except for Nolan Arenado, who just hit his 11th home run on the season. Puts that out, just to the right of the White Sox bullpen in the third row, in left field. Charlie Blackman's up 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout with one out here in the top of the sixth and takes a curveball low, 1-0 and the count. Dylan, looking to just shake that off and keep going. 
has not had a bad start today. He's been very good. A couple of mistakes, though. The ground ball over to short, flipped over to first, and Blackman's retired on the ground out. He is very fast up the line. He's had two bang-bang plays over there. Because on his strikeout, it was a drop third strike, and Grandal almost didn't get him. David Dowell's 0 for 2. Two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Rondell sets up on one knee on the outside portion of the plate. Ball comes back inside on a four-seamer. That's a strike above the knees. 0-1 the count. Rondell back in the same spot. It gets grounded right back up the middle. Robert's going to field and get it into second. That's a single for Dow. And I'll tell you, when Rondell set up that second time, you can see Dow look out of the corner of his eyes and realize the ball was probably going there. He picked it up. That's the kind of thing that'll get you hit for looking back. Now Trevor Story comes to the plate, and he's been very, very difficult for White Sox pitchers. In the three games we've seen him, he's one for one with a single in the second. He also has walked. They're going to go out and talk with Cease right now. He has 87 pitches, 52 of them for strike so far, 35 balls. As Don Cooper wants to go over things with just him and Yasmani, nobody else out on the mound with him. Evan Marshall and Jace Fry, meanwhile, got up in the bullpen, but they're just getting started. This is really Dylan Cease's guy here. He's got to go after Story. The first pitch swung on and sent over to short. Anderson feels it cleanly over to Madrigal for the force out. So a big, long talk that took longer than the at-bat, but Nolan Arenado adds another run for the Rockies. They lead 2 to nothing on a solo shot to left midway through the sixth. It is frustrating to me to see a team so good as the White Sox have such trouble with an under 500 team in the Rockies. They didn't have a good record when we saw them earlier in the month either. A high inside fastball, four-seamer from Gray, 0-1. But then again, we've seen Gray now in two of those three games, which also seems very unfair. Mazzara now swings at a changeup and fouls it back into the catcher, 0-2. Nomar had looked a lot better a few weeks ago, but now it's starting to cool off again, and we need more consistency out of him. His last tear started in Colorado. He hit two home runs in that series on both nights as he rips a line drive, picked out of the air by Murphy at first. And that's an out. He got a hold of it. Murphy went up in the air and caught it on a line drive going over his head. For the first out, now with one out in the bottom of the six, Mandrigal comes up and immediately sends this one skied out in the right. A can of corn, and the Sox go down quickly again. Only 52 pitches for John Gray with two outs here in the bottom of the six, and he hasn't given up a hit yet. And we are helping him along. The Sox bats are cold tonight, and we need to figure something out as Gray now throws an away four seamer that misses 1-0 to Luis Robert. I don't want to talk about no hitters, but then again, I do because I want to jinx this guy. It's five and two thirds innings through, and he hasn't given up one. He's only given up one walk. As Gray now throws one low and away, a check swing. They're going to say he went one and one on Robert. I have seen two no hitters in person on the south side of Chicago. Both were thrown by the opposing team. I almost saw Gavin Floyd no hitter. He went to two outs in the ninth before he gave up a hit. And I was invited to a Mark Burley perfect game, but had to watch a newborn, and my wife was mad at me for trying to skip out. So I said, don't worry about it. I'll catch the next game, Uncle Jim, and I missed it. And I bring it up every chance I can, as Robert will now draw a walk on an inside pitch. So the White Sox have their second base runner of the game here with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Tim Anderson has ripped two deep balls, but neither one of them have cleared. Now with Robert on first, he's going to go on the first pitch. White Sox trying to create something. He is head first and safe under the tag. His 19th stolen base of the season. As Anderson took a strike high at the letters and is 0-1. So Robert putting pressure on. Anderson swings and misses at a slider low and away. 0-2 quickly in the count with two outs here at the bottom of the sixth. I don't think Gray's concerned about Robert. He's like, take third. I'm not giving up a hit here. Hopefully we can prove him wrong. 
Swung on and missed on a low inside pitch. He dropped it, but he'll throw down the first. Another strikeout for Gray. And he has a no-hitter through the first six innings here on the road for the Rockies. We go to the top of the seventh inning, trailing two to nothing. Dylan Cease is going to start things off here in the top of the seventh inning on 88 pitches. And why not? He's got a quality start today. Only gave up two runs over his first six innings. Three or less is a quality start. He's 1-0 as that one's outside to McMahon. He gets a 7-8-9 hitters. He throws one low and inside for a second ball. Ricky Renteria continues to try to get these younger pitchers into the seventh or eighth innings. The fear is, though, that sometimes they put a runner on right away or can't find the plate like Cease right now is 3-0. Garrett Hampson waits on deck. But these guys have to learn they can't just go six innings and say that's it. He doesn't want them going, well, maybe I'll get four, maybe I'll get five, maybe I'll get six. He wants them to go seven or eight. He wants more than just one complete game on his roster, and he only has one from a White Sox pitcher. In fact, only three times this year has a White Sox starter made it to start the eighth inning. Three and one the count on a get-me-over fastball to McMahon. The lefty is 0 for 2. The sign from Grandal on the pitch. Swung on and missed, and now the count is full at 3 and 2. Sees so through 95 miles an hour on that pitch. So he's got a little juice left in the arm. Into the wind, he'll deliver. Sent down the third baseline, foul into the tarp. Count is 3 and 2. 2 nothing Rockies. Here in the top of the seventh. Gets the inside corner on a four-seamer. Called strike three. McMahon dropped the bat and tried to fake his way down to first. Umpire punches him out. The eighth strikeout for Cease. For the first out here at the top of the seventh. He's got nothing to be shamed about in this game. He's just getting outpitched right now by somebody who's having a heck of a night. Garrett Hampson's in the first pitch. A slider inside called the strike. 0-1 the count. He's dropping it right in there along the corners. On either side, he still is showing a lot of accuracy at this point in the game. With the one out on the top of the seventh. Next offering, jam shot in the left field. Coming in is Jimenez. Can of corn. There's two gone. The Rays defeat the Red Sox 2-1. to one. That's a final now out in Boston. As Dom Nunez steps in, 0-2 with a strikeout and a flyout. He's only hitting 187. He sits down here. In the ninth spot, batting left-handed. Cease into the wind in the pitch. Strike down the middle of four-seam fastball. He's still bringing it. Again into the wind. Check swing. They're going to say he went. He dove for a changeup that was just outside the zone, low and away. Counts as a strike on the swing. 0-2 the count. Dylan wastes no time and goes into his kick. Oh, he puts one down the third baseline. Just foul. And that would have been a lot of bases there as a shift is on for Nunez. And nobody was out and left. Now he throws inside and he gets away back to the backstop. Sees up to 101 pitches at this point. Trying to close out the seventh inning. One and two count. Two outs. Nobody on the top of the seventh. Rondal sets up on the outside corner. Fastball comes in. One and two as it's fouled off. Double barrel action in the uh, pen for the White Sox, but they're going to give Cease a chance to finish this inning. Fouls off another one, a four-seamer down the third base line. The count remains one and two. Dylan looking for that pitch. Inside, swung on and missed a four-seamer. He punches out nine over seven innings. He'll come off to applause even though he's trailing two to nothing. And his team needs to get him some runs. We're going to sing and we'll see if they can do it. We go into the bottom of the seventh inning with Leary Garcia up at the plate, 0 for 2. Two walks in this game, no hits for the White Sox. Even though there's a no-hitter, the Rockies are warming up pitchers. Gray has been so efficient, though, I doubt he's, anybody's coming in. 60 pitches just to get to the beginning of this inning. Garcia fouls off a pitch after taking a ball inside, 1-1 one and one the count. Sox need to find a way to get on and get that first hit, get the monkey off their back. High outside slider, one and two. I've seen a couple no hitters from opposing pitchers in this ballpark. The most recent was Francisco Liriano for the Twins a few years back. I remember Adam Dunn was the final out, and I remember laughing at how terrible he was in that final at bat, but he was terrible the entire time he was here. One, two count inside pitch, two and two. But the more notable one was July 1st, 
1990. As this one swung on and sent down the first baseline, I'm pretty sure it was July 1st. Andy Hawkins of the New York Yankees, and I don't care if Major League Baseball said that's not a no-hitter. That was a no-hitter. Fly out now in the right field, one away. Hawkins, no hits the White Sox, who end up winning the game. But he never hits the pitch to bottom of the ninth inning, so eventually Major League Baseball took away the no-hitter. All I know is that guy was out there, and he no-hit the White Sox all the way to the end of the game and was the only pitcher of record for the Yankees. Multiple errors, including, I believe, one by Danny Tartable. And I'm there with just my, my buddies. They're like 13 years old when you can go to the ballpark without your parents and not have to worry about the crazies of the world. Number down a third base line. Arenado gets it off and gets Abreu just barely as he almost gets an infield hit. A very close play over at first base. Hawk Harrelson and Tom Pachorik were right above us. It was bat day. I sold my bat to somebody for $100, some rich guy in front of me. And I don't mind that. And I remember slapping high fives with Hawk and Wimpy because we were these three kids right below their, their box in the last row of that section, up high behind home plate. 0-1 the count out of Yasmani Grandal. There's two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Still a no-hitter for Gray. Grandal takes an outside pitch, 1-1 one one the count. But Andy Hawkins, that was a no-hitter as far as I'm concerned. I don't really care what Major League Baseball says. They're not always right. Fouls off a changeup, 1-2 and two the count. Gray with his next offering inside, misses on a slider, 2-2. Two and two. 88 mile an hour slider, up now to 73 pitches. Still with no hits with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Sox only trail by two, so just because they're getting no hit right now doesn't mean they can't come back and win this game. The next offering, swung on and missed a changeup away. Gray, no hitter through seven. Sox need to figure him out. After seven, two to nothing, Rockies. Ricky Renteria is going to turn to Jace Fry at this point. Fry is going to come in. 19 games, 11 and two-thirds innings, 2-1 two and one record, 3.86 earned run average. He'll get Ramil Tapia as a leadoff hitter, throw a strike down the middle, 0-1, swinging strike. Great game by Dylan Cease. Unfortunately, he leaves with two runs given up over seven innings, but nine strikeouts. Was very effective. Nolan Arenado, the only guy that really got to him today. Arenado had a single that drove in a run and then a solo shot later on in the game. As Fry gets this one by the swinging Tapia for the second swinging strike, 0-2 the count. Into the wind, the pitch. Low misses on a curveball, 1-2. 15,222 here tonight. We'll see if the Sox are going to come back or if they're going to see a visiting pitcher get a no-no against their team, which would be frustrating to watch. The pitch. Skied into shallow right field. Mazar is underneath it. He'll camp out and make the catch. One gone. Cease, over seven. Gave up two earned runs, walked one. Nine strikeouts. Spread out six hits. Pitched 104. Different pitches out there. And with one out, Daniel Murphy's at the plate. One for three. Normally doesn't play against lefty starters. A low two-seamer misses. 1-0 the count. Bray has not done this because he's been striking out everybody. He's done it with efficiency and letting the ball get into play. As this one misses outside, 2-0. Oh. Inside cut fastball, 2-1 and one the count. That one hit the zone. It's a final out in New York as the D-backs beat the Mets 6-4. Swing and a miss at a changeup, low and away, 2-2 two and two the count is even the Murphy. Checks it up in an outside pitch. They'll appeal. He did not go. Three and two. The count is full with Arenado on deck. Fry goes into the wind. Gets him to foul off a four-seamer down the line. Count remains full. And he misses high on a two-seamer. And his job was to come in and get those two guys. I'll tell you that right now. Because Renteria would have a lot more options if he had two outs and the hot-hitting Arenado coming up. But instead now... Nolan Arenado, who already has a home run and an RBI single, comes up with a runner on and only one out. Runner on first, first pitch on the way. Throws inside on him, and Arenado goes down on the ground as Fry. That looked like a purpose pitch. 
Almost hits him in the head. Now he comes inside, a swing and a miss on a cut fastball, one and one the count. So Jace Fry trying to do a little intimidation here against the hot hitting Arenado. Comes inside on him again. Misses, two and one. Runner on first, one out. Top of the eighth inning, Sox trailing by two. The pitch. Swung on and sent over to third. Garcia bobbles the ball. He will get the runner at second, but will not get Arenado. Trying to go around the horn. Larry Garcia has had adventures in the infield. His bat normally pays off and makes up for those adventures. But it has not done so today. Charlie Blackman's up now. 0 for 3. With Arnado on first. First pitch comes inside a cut fastball. 0 and 1 the count. Lefty against lefty here. As Fry looks to finish out the inning. Now he comes inside and misses on a two-seamer. 1 and 1. As the season has gone on, Fry has started to figure out how to pitch the morning just one batter at a time. We've seen improvement on that front as a cut fastball is fouled away one and two. Still, though, he's only in there when they like what's coming up against him. Fouls off a pitch low and away down the third base line. Count remains one and two. Jace Fry to the lefty Charlie Blackman with two outs in the top of the eighth. Swung and a miss. Struck him out on a curveball tailing away. Jace Fry does the job. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Trailing 2 nothing. Aloy Jimenez will kick off the bottom of the eighth inning. The first pitch is a changeup high from John Gray, who has a no-hitter through seven innings and just threw his 75th pitch here to kick off the eighth. A buzz in the crowd. Sox fans wanting to break it up, but it's also a rare thing to get a ball game where you see a no-hitter even if from the opposing team. I want to win this game just as much as the rest of you. You get mixed feelings when it's the opposing guy because you don't see these very often. Especially if you're a fan in the stands. Right now, though, we're looking for Jimenez to do something as he swings and misses at a curveball away. And Gray is five outs away from a no-hitter. Edwin Encarnacion will come to the plate. I doubt Ricky Renteria lets the bottom of this order bat against Gray in the ninth. This slider is fouled off. Owen won the count. Moncada was not in the lineup today. That could have contributed a little bit, but Gray has been filthy. Pitched the contact early on. Now he's bearing down and trying to strike guys out. Owen won the pitch on the way. Inside misses one and one. He has walked two. So he's not dealing with the I have to be perfect thing. He's just dealing with make them hit pitches. Encarnacion, one and one pitch on the way. Swung on and missed at a slider low. He's one and two. Gray throws one low and away a slider. Two and two. He's trying to get Edwin to chase. He's not going to give him anything to hit because he doesn't mind if he walks a guy. Petro sets up on the inside portion. He misses high and inside a 97 mile an hour fastball. Three and two the count. The pitch. Misses inside and walks him. So the runner's going down 90 feet. Danny Mendick is going to come in and run for Edwin Encarnacion. Stay in the DH spot. Mazzaro will come up to hit. There's one out in the bottom of the eighth inning with Gray working on a no hitter. First pitch low and inside a slider. One and oh the count. Mendick with a lead over first base. He's got some speed. The 1 0 pitch. Mendick takes off. Swung on and chopped the first base. A low roller. Gray pushes Mazzara out of the baseline. Renteri is going to come out and yell. He doesn't give him the baseline and cuts him off. And he doesn't have the ball in his hands. That was a ridiculous call. I know he's got a no-hitter. Now Nick Mandrigo comes to the plate. First pitch, a strike. Curveball down the middle, 0-2. Gray interfered with the runner. He steps in front of Mazzara and forces him to go around him, standing directly on the baseline. Makes contact with him. Then picks up the ball and gets Mazzara by a hair. And the moment 
seems to have overtaken the brains of the umpires as Mandergal fouls this one off, one and two the count. Swung on and missed on a slider. Gray comes off pumping his fist. Can't do anything about it now. After eight, he's got a no-no. Aaron Bummer's gonna come in in the top of the ninth inning. 24 innings at 1.13 ERA, 38 strikeouts and six walks. You can see Ricky Renteria and the White Sox still believe they can win this game. They're only trailing by two. Robert is scheduled to lead it off. There's a possibility that gets moved around as a cut fastball swung on and missed. 0 1 the count. David Dowell's 1 for 3, swings and misses at this one, 0 2. I don't know what the exact ruling will be there, but I don't think that you can run into the base runner before you have the ball as he's running down the first base line. A cut fastball, swung on and missed. That's a strikeout. And I don't even know if you call it a base hit then. If it's interference, would that have ruined the no-hitter? I'd have to look all that up. And I'm not going to be able to do it till after the game, so you're going to have to look it up yourselves. That's a homework assignment for you here from Sachs in the basement. Trevor Story's up after a strikeout. There's one gone in the top of the ninth, and a low inside sinker misses. 1-0 the count. But whatever happened in that inning doesn't change the fact the White Sox are trailing 2 to nothing. John Gray will be going for a no-hitter in the bottom of the ninth. Inside sinker, 1-1 one one the count. But not without me getting upset about something. I'm pulling my best Hawk Harrelson right now because I don't know what the heck that call was. Swung on, sit down the first baseline. It's a base hit. They had a shift on. Shift kills him. Mazzaro's going to get the ball in, but it's going to be a double. Everybody was shifted over to the left side against Story. He's such a good hitter, I don't understand why there'd be any shift on. Now he has a double against Bummer with one out. You don't want to give up any more runs here. That's why Aaron's out there. Trevor Story, though, has been deadly. Ryan McMahon has not been. 0 for 3 with a strikeout in the seventh inning in the left-handed batter against the lefty Bummer. First pitch just misses inside. 1-0 the count. He's 3 for 19 on the season, hitting 158. The pitch. Swung on and set out in the left field. Coming in is Jimenez. He will make the play. Story has to stand on second base. There's two gone here in the top of the ninth. Garrett Hampson, who's 1 for 3 with a single and a run scores, steps up against Aaron Bummer with a runner on second. And I think at this point, we all just want to end this inning and get to the ninth. That's where the drama is. Cut fastball inside for a strike, 0-1. We're either going to see a no-hitter or possibly a White Sox comeback, but it's going to be exciting. The cut fastball goes across for a strike at the knees, 0-2 to Hampson. Must be difficult to get up there at the plate and realize everybody wants you out, including Rockies fans watching this game. If you're a Rockies fan listening to this, you're like, get out of the way, let's get to the end. Swung out and missed. Bummer strikes him out on three pitches, so we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Bummer waving his hands. Let's get the comeback. And away we go. Yoan Mankata is going to grab a bat. Ricky Renteria saying it's too big of a moment. He's been giving him rest, but he's going to let him come in here and pinch hit. So Yo-Yo will lead off the inning, hitting from the left side as a pinch hitter, hitting 331 against Gray. First pitch low and away. It's a ball, 1-0 the count. A no-hitter through eight innings. And a very, very good batter coming up, although Cold was expecting a full day off today. I'm sure Renteria gave him the option, and he said, put me in there. The 1-0 pitch, away for a ball, 2-0. Mankata's job is to get on, not just get a hit. You can get on with a walk, because one hit could tie this thing if it gets over the wall. Swings and puts it down the third baseline. Fair ball, the no-hitter is over. Yoan Mankata with a double down the third baseline, breaks up the no-no with no outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And the White Sox will get the tying run to the plate in the bottom of the ninth. The 14th double of the season for Yoan Mankata. They had a shift on. We've seen him break up that shift a lot this season. And now that the no-hitter is over, they're going to go and get their pitcher, John Gray, Pitch no hit baseball through eight innings. He will come off the mound. He gets a cheer from White Sox fans. They give him the clap of appreciation. He really went out and pitched today. James Pesos, five for five and save opportunities over nine to third innings with a one and zero record. 
Righty's hitting 273 against him. Lefty's hitting 105. We'll come up and try to finish this game off for the Rockies, but there's no outs here in the ninth inning. The tying run will come to the plate in Tim Anderson with Yohan Moncada on second. The Sox are a swing away from tying this ball game and looking for the unlikely comeback. High drama continues in the ninth, but for a different reason. The righty pesos with the pitch. Low and inside called a strike. Anderson doesn't like it. Says something to Yump. Steps out of the batter's box. That was a borderline call at the knees. So the no-hitters out of the way. That ain't happening. Now we're trying to get the win. The 0-1 pitch. Swung on and ripped out into left field. Underneath it, it will be caught by Dow. Mancada unable to advance. That was a good hit to the back half of left field. But there's an out. And Ricky Renteria isn't done playing with his lineup here in the ninth inning. James McCann is going to come out and hit for Larry Garcia. So that means Mancada, if somehow this goes to the top of the tenth inning, becomes a third baseman. Adam Engel likely comes off the bench to play center field. And McCann's here in just a pinch hit roll, hitting 315 in limited actions with two home runs. Four RBIs, but a 9-5-0 OPS. And we've seen him in pinch hit situations this season do very well. 1-0 the count with one out in the bottom of the ninth. Low and away a sinker, 2-0. McCann looking to be a hero or at least move things along here with Mankata on second. The pitch. Swung out and ripped up the middle. Oh, it's picked out of the air by Pesos. It ends up in his glove. It would have gone right up the middle for a base hit and likely scored Mankata. But instead now we have two outs in the bottom of the ninth and Jose Abreu is 0 for 3 with a ground out his last time up comes up. He is the tying run if he can get it out of here. And a base hit extends the inning. First pitch low and inside. That's called a strike. It's a terrible call. I would say 90% of that ball was outside of the box. It indicates the strike zone. 0 and 1 the count. The pitch. Misses low and away on a slider. 1 and 1. Two outs bottom of the ninth. Tying run at the plate for the White Sox. With Mancada on second, a no-hitter broken up in the bottom of the ninth inning by Yoan Mancada. Looking for that second hit of the game right now. The pitch. Swung on and sent down the first baseline. Just foul. That would have been extra bases. But now, Pezos, the lefty, has a 1-2 count against Jose Abreu. Checks Mancada at second. The pitch on the way. Misses away on a sinker. 2-2 two two the count. Gets a quick sign, stands in, checks Moncada. The 2-2 pitch. Misses away on a sinker, 3-2. Yasmani Grandal stands on deck. It all lines up well for the Sox here. But the pitch is here. 3-2 full count payoff pitch. Misses low and Abreu walks. So Abreu sitting 1-2, draws the walk. The tying run now at first base, and the winning walk-off run comes to the plate in the form of the hottest hitter in Major League Baseball over the last 10 games coming into this game. A 5.59 average with four home runs and 14 RBI over his last 10 games before today, where he's 0 for 3 with a strikeout in the seventh, as everybody was a victim of John Gray. He has to hit from the right side for the first time today against the lefty. Rondal calls time, steps out, playing some mind games. Now steps in with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. The pitch on the way. Swung and a miss. Outside four seamer high and away. He's 0-1. Just missed that one. He was going for it. Swung on and tipped back. 0-2 on a sinker away. So both pitches on the outside corner. Rondal needs to take a moment and think. Pesos checks the runner and delivers. Misses low and inside on a slider that was close. I thought that was strike three. Rondal playing with fire. His one and two on the count with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Tying runs on first. Mancata's on second. Rondal is the winning run at home. Two nothing Rockies, the one two pitch. On the way. Misses outside for a ball, two and two. Standing on deck is Aloy Jimenez. Sox fans on their feet. It has been an intense inning here as the no-hitter was broken up and now it's 2-2 to Grandal. Pesos with the pitch. 
check swing. Did he go? No, he did not. He appealed on the first. He did not go. The count is full. Pesos with a quick pitch into the kick. Here it comes. Swung on and chopped back. The count remained full. Runners on first and second. Socks down by two. Grandal at the plate. The payoff pitch once again is on the way. Swung on and popped back into the stands in the upper deck behind home plate. Grandal hanging tough. Count remains full. Pezos, the pitch. Misses away. That's a walk. Grandal goes down the first base. The winning run is over at first. Adam Engel is going to come down and run at first base for Grandal. If you're trying to figure out the math here, that means McCann will be the catcher if somehow this goes into the 10th. Engel will go out to center. Moncada be a third, but it all matches up. The first pitch away, a sinker for a ball 1-0 and to Jimenez, who's hitting 333 with runners in scoring position. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and the base is juiced. Next pitch, a strike down the middle on a slider, 1-1. One one. Mancada's at third. Abreu at second. The tying run, Angle the winning run at first. The 1-1 one pitch to Jimenez. Swung on and foul back to the backstop, 1-2. and two. An exciting finish. We hope it finishes off the right way. The 1-2 pitch. Swung on and chopped, foul down the third baseline. Everybody was moving. A hit here ties this ball game. The pitch. Inside, brushes him off, two and two. Swung on and sent up the middle. A nice play, it's short, and he's going to get him on the fourth out at second base. Angle almost beat the throw over. Jimenez grounds out 6-4 to end the game. The White Sox break up the no-hitter and almost tie this ball game with the possibility of a walk-off. Jimenez unable to finish it out. The rally falls just short. In the end, two great pitching performances and almost a no-hitter from John Gray, who will get the win with eight innings of no-hit baseball. Sox tried to come back in the ninth. They ran up against a great pitcher today and showed incredible heart in the ninth inning, trying to come back and tie and possibly win this game. They will fall short. Two runs on seven hits with no errors for the Rockies. No runs on one hit, no errors for the White Sox. John Gray went eight innings pitched for the Rockies with seven strikeouts, three walks, one hit given up at the beginning of the ninth inning from the pinch hitter, Juan Moncada, who hit a double. Other than that, we just saw guys get on base with walks today. Robert Abreu and Encarnacion had walks. We saw Grandal draw a walk there at the end. Sox unable to come up with a big hit, unfortunately. James Pazos who had the shakiest ninth I've ever seen without giving up a run. Pitches an inning, walks two, and almost blows the entire thing. Dylan Cease had a really nice game. Seven innings pitched, six hits, one walk, nine strikeouts. He put on a runner per inning. That was it, even. That's solid. He gives a quality start, and he strikes out nine, giving up only two earned runs. But John Gray was just better today, and he was better than pretty much every other pitcher in all of Major League Baseball was today. The White Sox dropped this one. They're still 10 games over 500, and they will try to solve the mystery of the Colorado Rockies tomorrow in the conclusion of this two-game set. We're 0-3 against Colorado. Tomorrow, Gio Gonzalez takes the mound and tries to fix that. For our sponsors, Cork and Carry at the Park at 33rd and Princeton, a Southside tradition that has great food, and you want to support them, go use Grubhub, go direct to CorkandCarryAtThePark.com. For all of us here at Sox in the Basement, the podcast for fans, by fans, my name is Chris Lanuti. We will see you tomorrow for another White Sox simulated game as part of a simulated season, and I thank you all before I get out of here for the kind messages and the posts and the people thanking me for doing this. Look, I'm having fun doing it. We'll see you tomorrow on Socks in the Basement, found everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at SocksInTheBasement.com. Bye-bye, everybody. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always on SocksInTheBasement.com.